welcome i welcome you all to this lecture in the course samasa in paninian grammar and this is the first course on samasa as is our practice we begin our lecture with the recitation of the mangala charana vishvesham satchidanandam वंदेहम योखिलं जगत् चरीकर्ति बरी भरति संजरी हरति लीलया विश्वेशम सच्चिदानंदम वंदेहम योखिलं जगत् चरीकर्ति बरी भरति संजरी हरति लीलया in this course we are concentrated on studying the tatpurusha samasa we have stated that tatpurusha samasa is by far the most productive of the types of samasas in sanskrit avyayi bhava tatpurusha bahubrihi and dvandva in this particular order panini has treated the samasas in sanskrit in his own grammar called अष्टाध्यायी तत्पुरुष समास इज एक्सप्लेन बाय पाणिनी इन हिज ग्रामर इन हिज टेक्स्ट कॉल्ड अष्टाध्यायी बाय मेनी सूत्रज इन कंपेरिजन विद द अदर टाइप्स ऑफ समास बी इट समास विधायक सूत्र और समासांत प्रत्यय विधायक सूत्र और स्वर विधायक सूत्र द सूत्र इज कंपोज टू एक्सप्लेन तत्पुरुष समास आर वेरी मेनी इन कंपेरिजन विद द सूत्र इज कंपोज टू एक्सप्लेन फीचर्स ऑफ अदर टाइप्स ऑफ समास वी ऑल्सो नोटेड दैट द तत्पुरुष समास हैज गॉट मेनी मेनी वराइटीज वी हैव स्टडीड देम इन दिस पर्टिकुलर कोर्स first we studied the vibhakti tatpurusha in which dvitiya tritiya chaturthi panchami saptami and shashti in this order the vibhakti tatpurusha samasas are mentioned in the grammar of panini they were studied following which the karma dharaya samasa was studied dvigu is also part of this particular treatment of karma dharaya samasa after which we studied nay tatpurusha samasa and also the ekadeshi tatpurusha samasa following which we studied the gati tatpurusha samasa and then we studied the upapada tatpurusha samasa these are the many varieties of tatpurusha samasa that we have studied in this particular course the features of the tatpurusha samasa can be highlighted in the form of a simple equation stated in this particular slide where we have x plus y where x and y are two independent and separate entities they are independent and separate in terms of the meaning as well as the word form as well as the accent however these two independent and separate units are semantically interrelated and so the speaker of sanskrit decides to merge them together and form the output in the form of one entity xy this one entity xy will have three features it will be treated as one unit in terms of artha shabda and swara so the three features would be aikarthya aikapadya and aikaswarya one meaning one word form and one accent these will be the features of x y amongst x and y it is y which will act as the head of this particular unit x y what it means is that 
when xpy will be related to any other external word in the sentence, it is only through y that this xy will get related to this external word. x will not be related with any other external word in the sentence without going through y. When x is related to any other external word in the sentence without going through y, such a samasa is treated as an exception and is also termed as a samartha samasa. Right now, we are studying the Upapada Tatpurusha Samasa stated by 2.2.19. The sutra stating the Upapada Tatpurusha Samasa is Upapadam Ating. And this sutra has got two padas, Upapadam and Ating. Upapadam is 1 slash 1, which means the word designated as Upapada. This is stated by Sutra 1. 3192 Tatra Upapadam Since the word Upapadam is stated in Prathama Vibhakti, the application of the Sutra Prathama Nirdishtam Samasa Upasarjanam ensures that the word Upapada gets the Upasarjana Saudhnya and then Upasarjanam Purvam ensures that this Upapada occupies the first position in the compound also known as Purva Nepata. The other word in the Sutra is Ating. This is one slash one of Ating, which means which is not a thing. And that means which is not a thinganta eventually, which does not end in a thing. Words continued are Sup and Sahasupa and also Samartha Padavidhi. So the meaning of the sutra is the following. Any subanta whose pratipatikas are designated as upapada is compounded with any other interrelated word which is not a thinganta. I repeat, any subanta whose pratipatikas are designated as upapada is compounded with any other interrelated word which is not a thinganta. Now, this meaning gives rise to several questions. The first one is the following. What is the need of the word Ating in the Sutra? What it implies is what is achieved by this particular negation? The question arises because when we make not a Tinganta a condition for this Sutra to apply, the only other available option through this negation is that of a Subanta. Suptingantam Padam is the sutra which defines what is a Pada in Sanskrit and Pada Samoho Vakyam which is the input for the Samasa. So if a thing is used, there is a negation of thing, obviously the other available option as far as Pada is concerned is that of a Sup or a Subanta. But this is available to us anyway because of the continuation of the words sup and sahasupa, for which we do not need this negation. And still Panini continues to use the word a thing in this particular sutra. So we are forced then to think that in this sutra, the basic condition of sup and sahasupa does not apply. Rather sup and sah only will apply. So the basic skeleton of the compound generated by this particular sutra is the following. So we have the Purvapada ending in a sup. So we have Pratipadika plus su and Uttarapada will not be a subanta. So going by the negation of a thing where we know that thing is a suffix added after a verbal root. So the other type of suffix which is also added after a verbal root is krit. So, a thing which is a negation becomes fruitful or purposeful when we understand krit as the meaning of a thing. And that is what is understood over here. So, the compound input is pratipadika plus su plus dhatu plus krit. 
this will be the alaukika vigraha and then supodhatu pratipadika yoha will apply and will delete su and so the compound output generated would be pratipadika of the purva pada plus dhatu plus krit which is part of the compound as the second part this will be the structure of the compound output after having studied the upapadas stated in 3.2 there are some more upapadas stated also in 3.3 and 3.4 we will focus here on the upapadas stated in 3.3 and here are some examples first we go to the sutra 3329 unnyor graha the word unnyor is in 7/2 which means when the upapadas are ud and ni graha is 5/1 immediately after the verbal root gru to swallow the suffix ghai continues which is 1/1 ghai means the suffix a with the markers gh as well as y now we have udgiranam as the laukika vigraha from which by adding the suffix ghai prescribed by this particular sutra we get the compound output udgara so udgaraha samudrasya what it means is ati pravruddha shabdaha the intensely preceded sound of the c that is the meaning of udgara similarly when the laukika vigraha is ni giranam we get the compound output as ni garaha devadattasya and here the word nigara means bhakshana bhakshanam devadattasya this is how udgara and nigara are the compound words which are formed by adding the suffix ghai to the verbal root guru when the upapadas are ud and ni then we study the next sutra 3333 and the sutra is prathane vau ashabde there are three padas in the sutra prathane vau and ashabde prathane and ashabde both these words are in 7/1 meaning in the sense of expansion but not that of a word vau is another word in the sutra which is also in 7/1 and in this case it is mean meaning the upapada so when v is the upapada straha continues straha is in 5/1 this is of stru verbal root meaning to cover the suffix ghai continues ghai is 1/1 which is the suffix a with the markers gh as well as y so now when the meaning to be conveyed is expansion of cloth vistaraha patasya that would be the samasa output generated vistaraha patasya when the meaning to be conveyed is that of expansion of words we don't add the suffix ghai and therefore we'll get the form vistaraha vachasam so vistara and vistara these are contrastive vistara is derived by adding the suffix ghai which means expansion of cloth other than shabd but when the expansion of shabdas are intended then we get the word form vistara the next sutra is parau anupatyaya inaha 3338 in this particular sutra there are three padas parau anupatyaye and inaha parau is 7/1 meaning when pari is the upapad anupatyaye is 7/1 of anupatyaya and anupatyaya means sequence so anupatyaye means in the sense of sequence or turn inaha is 5/1 which means immediately after the verbal root in which means to go ghai is continued 
ghai is one slash one of the suffix ghai which is a with the markers gh as well as ya. So when the meaning to be conveyed is my or your turn, the compound output generated is paryayaha mama and paryayaha tava. So paryaya is the compound output generated by adding the suffix ghai to the verbal root inya, ina. Similarly, the next sutra is 3392, upasarge ghokkihi, upasarge ghokkihi. Now in this sutra, there are three padas, upasarge, goho and kihi. Upasarge is 7 slash 1, meaning when an upasarga is the upapada. Goho is 5 slash 1, which means immediately after ghu, and ghu means da and dha, da dha gupada. Kihi is 1 slash 1 of ki, meaning e, the suffix e with the marker k. So now, when upasarga is the upapada, immediately after the verbal root ghu, the suffix ki is added in the sense of bhava. So now, when the meaning is extensive donation, so pra is the upasarga, da is the verbal root, ki is the suffix in the sense of bhava, and so we get the da, the a at the end of da deleted because of the marker k, and so we have pra the e and pradi. Pradi means extensive donation. Similarly, when we have the meaning to be conveyed, namely holding together. So sam is the upasarga, dha is the verbal root designated as ghu, to which we add the suffix ki, and then we get the compound output generated as sandhi, sandhi. Similarly, we will get many other words of this kind, namely vidhi and so on. Next we go to the, to the next sutra, 3393, which means karmani, which is karmani adhikarane cha. This is a very peculiar sutra and this sutra has got two padas. This sutra has got three padas, karmani, adhikarane and cha. Karmani is seven slash one, when karman is the upapada. Adhikarane is also seven slash one, which means in the sense of a substratum. Goho is continued, goho is five slash one, which means immediately after ghu, and ghu means da and dha. Kihi is one slash one of ki which means e, the suffix e with the marker k. So now, the meaning of the sutra, upas karmanya dhikarane cha, is the following. Add the suffix ki, immediately after the verbal roots designated as ghu, namely da and dha, in the sense of a substratum, when karman is the upapada. I repeat, add the suffix ki, immediately after the verbal roots designated as ghu, namely da and dha, in the sense of a substratum, when karman is the upapada. So we have the meaning to be conveyed as where water is stored, the substratum where water is stored. Jalam dhiyate asmin, this is the laukika vigraha, so here the alaukika vigraha is jala plus su plus dha plus ki. And then samasa saudhnya takes place. So pratipadika saudhnya takes place. And so then supodhatu pratipadika yoho applies. And so we have jala plus zero plus dha plus e. And then because of this marker k, a in dha gets deleted. So we have jala plus zero plus dha plus e and so finally we get the form jaladhi which means jalam dhiyate asmin 
a substratum where water is stored. Similarly, where arrows are stored and the laukika vigraha is sharaha dhiyante asmin and the compound output generated is shara dhi. And in the similar fashion, many words, they can be generated. Now let us proceed further. This is a very important sutra, Ishaddu Sushu Krachra Krachra Khal 33126 Ishaddu Sushu Krachra Krachra Khal Khal There are three padas in the sutra, Ishad Dus Sushu 7 slash 3, Ishad Dur and Su, these are the Upapadas, that is the meaning. Krachra Krachra Thesho is 7 slash 3 in the sense of unhappiness, Krachra for Dur and happiness, a Krachra for Su and Ishad. Khal is 1 slash 1, which refers to the suffix a with markers kh and l and the meaning of this suffix khal is bhava or karman. Words continued are dhatoho from 3191 meaning immediately after a verbal root, pratyayaha 311, krudating 3193, tatropapadam saptamistham 3192, the meaning of the suffix khal is stated by the sutra tayoreva krityakta khalarthaha. Tayoreva refers to bhava karmanohu and that is why the suffix khal means bhava as well as karma. So the overall meaning of the sutra is the following. The suffix khal is added in the sense of bhava or karman when upapadas are ishat, dur and su denoting happiness and unhappiness. Ishad and Su denoting happiness, Dur denoting unhappiness. I repeat, the suffix Khal is added in the sense of Bhava or Karman when Upapadas are Ishad, Dur and Su denoting happiness and unhappiness. Ishad and Su denoting happiness, Dur denoting unhappiness. So when the meaning to be conveyed is, the pot is being made by you effortlessly. When this meaning is to be conveyed, where akrit shrena ayatnena kriyate bhavata kataha. This is the laukika vakya expressing this particular sense. And here akrit shrena kriyate. These two words, they get expressed by the compound formation where we have su referring to akritsra and the second su referring to su pratyaya plus kru plus khal. Khal referring to the karma. And so samasa saudhnya takes place and so the pratipadika saudhnya also takes place and therefore now supodhato pratipadika yoho applies and so we have su plus zero plus kru plus a and because of a now kru gets the guna substitution and so we have su plus zero plus kar plus a and finally we get the form sukara sukaraha kato bhavata which means akrachrena ayatnena kriyate bhavata kataha the pot is being made by you happily akrachrena effortlessly the same meaning will be conveyed by also Ishat Kara. So Ishat Karaha Kato Bhavata. This will be the other expression available to us. Now when the meaning is the pot is being made with much effort or much toil and unhappiness, then Krachrena yatnena kriyate bhavata kataha. This would be the laukika meaning. And then krachrena kriyate 
this will get compound expression in the form of the following process. So we have dur plus su, dur referring to krachra, su is the pratyaya, so dur plus su plus kru plus khal, and then samasa saudhnya takes place, and the pratipadika saudhnya takes place. So supodhatu pratipadika yoho applies, and so we have dur plus zero plus kru plus a, and now because of a, kru gets the guna substitution, so we have dur plus zero plus kar plus a, and finally we'll get the compound output dushkara. Dushkaraha kato bhavata. This means the same thing as krachrena yatnena kriyate bhavata kataha, which means the pot is being made with much effort or much toil or much unhappiness by you. In the same fashion, when the meanings are to be expressed in the following way, easy to be obtained, we'll get the form sulabha. Labha is the verbal root which means to obtain and sulabha means something which is very easy to be obtained as opposed to durlabha which means difficult to be obtained. Sugama meaning easy to be gone and durgama as opposed to it meaning difficult to be gone. Similarly, subodha meaning easy to be known and durbodha difficult to be known as opposed to subodha. So, happiness and unhappiness, krachra and akrachra, these are the meaning conveyed by dur and su respectively in these words and words of the same kind. There are so many words of this particular kind and this process is highly productive. We use so many words of so many words derived from this particular process. Lastly, we study a particular vartika which is stated on the sutra Anyabhyopi Drishyate 33130. And this vartika is Bhashayam Shasi Yudhi Drushi Drushi Mrushibhyo Yuj Vaktavyaha. Bhashayam Shasi Yudhi Drushi Drushi Mrushibhyo Yuj Vaktavyaha. This means the suffix yuch is to be added in the sense of bhava or karman when upapadas are ishat, dur and su denoting happiness and unhappiness to the verbal roots shasa to rule, yudha to fight, drusha to see, drusha to bear and mrusha to tolerate. I repeat, the suffix yuch is added in the sense of bhava or karman when upapadas are ishad, dur and su, denoting happiness and unhappiness, to the verbal roots shasa to rule, yudha to fight, drusha to see, drusha to bear, and also mrusha to tolerate. So now, when we have the meaning difficult to be ruled, we'll add the suffix yuj after the verbal root shasa when the upapada is dur and the compound output derived will, would be dushyasana. Similarly, difficult to fight with, when this meaning is to be conveyed, we add the suffix yuj after the verbal root yudha, when the upapada is dur, and the compound output generated is duryodhana. Similarly, when the meaning to be conveyed is difficult to be seen, we add the suffix yuj, after the verbal root drusha, when the upapada is dur, and we get the form dur darshana as the finally derived compound output, as opposed to sushasana, which means easy to be ruled, suyodhana, easy to fight with, and also sudarshana, easy to be seen. No wonder that Bhimasena refers to Duryodhana as Suyodhana and not as Duryodhana in various classical Sanskrit plays and also in the literature. To summarize, the Upapada Tatpurusha compound is a very highly productive 
टाइप ऑफ द तत्पुरुष द उपपद तत्पुरुष कंपाउंड डिस्प्लेस द एम्बेडेड आर्ग्यूमेंट स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ द वर्ब विथ इट्स आर्ग्यूमेंट्स बोथ एज उपपद एज वेल एज द मीनिंग ऑफ द सफिक्स एडेड टू द वर्बल रूट इन द ग्रामर पाणिनी यूजेस वेरी रेयरली द वर्ब इन द सूत्रज द वन यूज इन दिस सेक्शन डिनोट्स द एक्शन ऑफ सींग देर बाय हाईलाइटिंग द बेसिक एक्ट ऑफ ऑब्जर्वेशन नीडेड फॉर अ ग्रामेरियन टू फॉर्म्युलेट रूल्स दीज आर द टेक्स्ट रिफर्ड टू थैंक यू वेरी मच